Hey y'all, gonna do uh, one more uh, Led Zeppelin lesson today. Um, this one's for cashmere, and believe it or not, this one's not as uh, as difficult as it sounds either. Um, it's in that uh, dad gad tuning, sort of a, a modal kind of tuning. Um, D A D G A D, and it sounds like this. Um, it's that one that he used for. for White Summer and Black Mountainside and all that. Um, but it's kind of an Indian sort of Celtic mixture thing. But anyway, um, let's get right into it. There's a few different parts to it. First off is when it first starts and does that main riff. So that one's actually not complicated at all really. Um, keep your uh, your pinky has to go on the A string at the fifth fret all throughout this thing. It stays there, or at least that that note gets covered. It'll the, the actual finger will change, but um, cover that uh, A string at the fifth fret, and your pointer finger goes on the G string at the second fret, and that G string is just going to walk up. Between each one of those, he does. He hits that bass G, uh, the bass. It's actually tuned down to D. That bottom note, that low string. Now I do it where I'm only fretting for when I'm doing the riff. I'm only playing the A, D, and G strings when I'm doing that. You get really sloppy like I just did, you'll get some of that B string in there and you shouldn't. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get that walking up on the G string. See now by now I've switched fretting that A string at the fifth fret to my uh, my middle finger. In fact I usually start with pinky and then I switch to my ring finger. Then I switch it to my middle finger. Again, all you did on that G string was. And then it's up to this. Where they're both in the fifth fret on the A string and the G string. So by now I'm at my pointer finger on that A string at the fifth fret, and I'm using my pinky on the G string at the seventh fret. And again, you're still, uh, unless you're doing that in between them, I'm still only plucking those three strings, the A, D, and G. And in fact, sometimes I mute the D string in the middle, so it's just those two. So that repeats a zillion times until it gets to this. So that starts up here. Actually, this one's kind of easy because you can just pay attention to the fret markers more than anything else. So you're on these two strings, the G and the high E string, which is now tuned down to D, but I'll call it the E string. So it's both of those in the 12th fret with the... You can... This time you can let that B ring open, which isn't B anymore, but it's B string. Um, so in the 12th fret... So it's 12, 11 on the G string, and the... That one stays right where it is, on the, on the 12th fret on the E string. Now do the exact same thing, two frets lower. From here on in, it's 12, 10. Now go down three frets to the 7th. So when you get to that, those last three, it's just these three fret markers. 7, 5, 3. So it goes 10, 8, 5, 3, or 7, 5, 3. Oh, okay. That's, sorry, it's 12, 10, 7, 5, 3. And it's all just... All on the G string. This, the high note stays the same. It's okay if you strum that D string during that because the song's in D, so. And then we 
which is three, two, open on the D string. Now when he's doing it on the studio version, during that descending part, it's like the strings and the horns doing the de 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 de. They're walking down, but you can hear on the he's still playing the main riff all through that. And by the time they're done with, he's right here. So, uh, but in, what, to do it as a single arrangement without all the string stuff, um, you do this. So you start back on the second part. You start right here. So it goes. So you're back into that climbing. Then the second, the next time around, it goes. Wait. That's on the D string. It's. And then hammer on uh, second fret on the A string. Open A, open D. Now on this, you're only playing the A and the D strings. On the D string, it's two, uh, two, four, two, all the way up to seven, and slide and go back down to two. And then in between each one of those, every other one, he's same thing you just did. Then after all those, it goes back into. section. So that is, uh, some people play it like this. That's not what Jimmy did, he did this. So you get uh, at the fifth fret, cover the D, uh, the B and E strings, the two highest, and the two lowest. Actually, I kind of mute the A string, so I'm only playing that note. But you get those open strings, those two open ones in the middle. Mute that A string, but leave those two open. And I know that's how he played it, because you can even look online and find pictures of him with the Dan Electro doing this chord. And that's the only song Zeppelin did where he would have that chord on the Dan Electro. So he's certainly playing it like this. And this is the all I see turns to brown. That's just uh, the D and G strings at the second fret. And you can kind of play around with the, the high string at the second fret too, because you can go... this one too. Do do do. And that's all the parts to this song. It's just a question of playing along with it and putting those all in the right order. But that's everything. So if you have trouble with any of them, just rewind this and, and go through those little parts again. Um, it's like a nine minute tune, so it is, you do have to piece it all together. Um, but those are, the, those are the different blocks of it. So it's actually not really difficult to play. And then once you get that tuning, you can... kind of stuff that he does in that dad gad tune but um, good luck with that one again I would recommend you play along with it to, to really get it right